Hello everybody, it has been quite a while since I've made a video and uh, well, since I'm stuck here in COVID land, at least for another couple days, I thought I would do a quick little video showing off my brand new precision adjust knife sharpener from WorkSharp. I'd like to thank all the kind folks over at WorkSharp for sending me this guy for testing and evaluation and uh, let's just get right to it. Let's see how this performs. This is literally the very first time this thing has touched steel. You can see all of these are perfectly brand new and untouched. So we'll see how it works. This is going to be a interesting experience. I have used knife sharpeners similar to this before, uh, mostly of the Wicked Edge variety. I wasn't very impressed with the, how those works, mostly user error. But for the price, this thing is really hard to beat, 60 bucks. Let's see if it works as well as they say. The knife that we'll be touching up today is this Amare Field Bro. Fantastic little knife. This is, however, a little bit thick behind the edge. It still slices and dices all right, but I want to thin this down just a little bit and get this thing slicing and dicing like nobody's business. So first things first, before we even get this set up, I'm going to do a couple little things that I normally do when I'm sharpening up my knives on a bench stone. I'm going to draw a little bit on the edge here with a normal Sharpie. I've got it completely marked off on that ground bevel. You can see there on both sides. So that just lets me know when I'm hitting my edge. Next thing, I'm gonna take off a little bit of this gaffer tape. You don't have to use gaffer tape, but I just really like it because it is a little bit more durable than masking tape and it sticks really well without leaving crazy amounts of residue. But I'm just gonna mask off my blade here a little bit, especially since we're using a clamp. Now that we've got this thing all nice and masked up, I've got a little bit of marker on the edge so I can see where I'm hitting when I'm sharpening. Let's get this bad boy in the clamp. So I'm gonna go with Right about there seems good. Now that I've got it in the angle vise here, you can see it is pretty steady. It's not 100% rock solid, but you know, if you're doing this lightly, it's not gonna be an issue. So we'll see how that works. I really do like this angle gauge. I think it's nice and clear to read. Of course, this is not gonna be 100% accurate. If you want complete accuracy, get an angle measuring app on your phone or get a clinometer. Of course, if you have a little bit wider of a knife, like my uh, very heavily used Nakari knife here, halfway through a regrind, but uh, neither here nor there. Since the edge is out a little bit farther than this field bro right here, that angle is gonna be a little bit more shallow. So nevertheless, it is gonna make for very repeatable results, especially if you're using it on the same knife. And we're just gonna go to town. So I'm gonna go at 17 degrees, at least according to here. And I'm just going to do a handful of passes here. And we'll see how well this works. I also forgot I was going to set a little bit of a timer here to see how long it's going to set take me to do this. So I'll just set my watch here right there and we'll see how long it takes. And let's check out this angle and see how well I'm doing. It looks like I'm pretty consistent across the entire edge of the blade here. A little bit of dust and dirt. I've lost count pretty much here, but I'm just going to go right until I hit that edge. So we'll touch up the heel of the blade here. I have to reset every now and then and tell myself not to put too much extra pressure. And we'll do a nice easy pass here, scrubbing along the whole edge, making sure that we've got things nice and neat. And let's double check our handiwork here and see how close we are to getting that Sharpie out of the way. So I've got just a little, little bit here at the heel of the knife. I'm not super concerned about that, especially since I'm hitting that thumb stud there. And it looks like I've got just a little bit more edge, especially towards the tip. I still have a little bit of that original bevel, so I'll focus a little bit more there. I'm definitely a big fan of this magnetic base. It's super easy to take out your knife, inspect it, look at it up, up close, and put it right back at the exact angle that you were at before. Let's put a little bit more work on the 320, especially on this side, and we will be on to flipping towards the other side. The manual does say to keep doing this until you start to feel a burr on the other side. I can't quite feel one just yet, so we'll keep going. 
here. I am still running into that thumb stud a little bit, so it's kind of working around that, but I think that's going to be as good as I get around there at least. Here. I really want to make sure I smooth out that bevel towards the back there. Uh, I'm starting to grind through that tape here on my thumb stud. All right. All right, let's take a quick look and see how we're doing with that edge. Wipe it down here. A little bit of extra reflection back here towards the tip. So let's uh, work on that a little bit more and we will flip it over. Taking nice, easy, full sweeps here making sure I try to get that angle as far back as I can. Again, I'm seeing a little bit of movement with this when I'm pushing down, um, so something to keep an eye out, but I think so far it's working really, really well. I think it would be pretty cool to have a little bit longer of a stone to have a little bit more throw, but so far, I think on a little pocket knife like this, it's working really, really well. All right, so I think that's gonna be good for on this side. A little bit over 10 minutes here on the watch. So let's flip this guy over and we'll get right to it. Kind of get these nice big sweeping strokes. I uh, had that pop out again. I think I'm pushing a little bit harder than I need to there. So I guess that is a good barometer to double check and make sure I'm not pushing too hard. The lighter I, I push, the less deviance I'm going to get in that blade. It's, you can see it's not a lot, but I do get a little bit of flex out of that system. Now that I've been doing this for a while, I think these nice slow controlled sweeps are going to be a lot better than those fast little quick scrubbing motions. It's going to be a lot more controlled. Let's do another pass and we'll double check our progress here. All right, let's double check our handiwork here. Looks like we're pretty much there as far as working all the way to the edge here. I cannot see any more Sharpie. At this point, I'm going to start working on building that bevel. So I'm going to be a little bit more consistent on how I'm sharpening this. It looks like my edges are a pretty even. I'll probably take this side down just a little bit more, the side that we uh, touched up to begin with, and really start to build up that bevel. Definitely feel a nice bevel here on the entirety of my edge. So now that we've got it formed on that side, we're going to do one other pass here on this far edge. So let's do another couple passes here. Again, I have to reset and make sure that I'm staying nice and light. We'll let's see, I can definitely feel it starts off right about there. I can feel it all the way towards the tip of the knife. I think we're doing a pretty good job at forming that burr and we are definitely ready to go on to this 600. So now that I've done all this work with that 320, this is gonna be a lot faster. And all I'm doing is getting the scratches from the last stone out on here. I've done all the work already, so let's just get right to it. I really love the way these diamond stones feel. They definitely cut in and you can feel them pretty much working right away. I am a really big fan of how easy it is to stop and look at your knife and really make sure that things are nice and even. I mean, that is such a big plus over bench stones or any other system that I've seen. This is probably the most intuitive and easy to use system straight out of the box. And I think we will be almost ready to transition over to that ceramic hone stone. And I'm gonna flip this back over. I think it's just easier to use this magnetic mount, to be honest, than try to keep flipping it over the button here. It is, that does have a lot of tension back there. So not a big deal, but I'm glad WorkSharp decided to do that little magnetic closure because that is super easy just to flop back and forth and have that socket be able to work both ways. 
I think we're ready for this ceramic hone. I have been very, very impressed by these little stones so far. I really like them quite a bit. Last little stone here, and that feels a heck of a lot smoother than our last stone. So I'm gonna go back to our old scrubbing method here. And we're just gonna go to town and make sure we have a nice and polished edge. We will see how fine and shiny we can get it. This is the first time I have used a guided system in maybe four or five years. I used to have a sharp maker that I used pretty regularly, but once I got the muscle memory down for freehand sharpening, I have not touched that since. It's kind of a whole different thing to use this guided system, but I have a feeling that it's gonna work out very well in my overall sharpening toolbox especially when I want to set a bevel on an edge and really keep it nice and consistent. I'm, gonna be need, I'm probably going to need to clean the stone after I am done doing this one knife. It, it, that is the downside of having smaller stones is that you are definitely focusing all of the work on that small square inch of a stone. I think as long as you keep in mind that with this system that you'll have to clean that stone regularly, it's not going to be a big deal. And man, I can already see that edge is nice and shiny. Flip it over. Oh, that was a close call. I definitely felt that catch on my thumb, but uh, we're intact and we're not leaking. So I call that a success. All right, okay. Let's try this once again. My nemesis, the spring button there. That is quite tough to push in. <laughs> okay, let's do one full and complete pass here it's so much easier just to flip that over but i think i will be sticking to doing just grabbing it out of that magnetic clamp there now i think that's pretty good oh man that is sharp already let's check it out on some uh just a quick shave test here man that is hair shaving sharp right off the stones without doing anything else so let's call that good but man, that bevel looks so much better. I laid it back quite a bit, and I think that's really gonna help the slice and dice. But let's clean this up. We'll be right back. A little bit of rubbing alcohol took all that extra Sharpie off. Definitely would have had a couple of little nicks there on my thumb stud had I not taped it up. So looking at the bevel here, try to get a nice close up view of that. We can see it's nice and shiny already. This is unstropped. I mean, that's a dang good looking edge. Let's just do a quick little cut test, single ply paper towel. And that again is unstropped. We are slicing and dicing right through here. Try a knife that is uh, decidedly less sharp here just to give a little contrasting view, saying that's not just the knife here. <laughs> but yeah, I am very happy with that edge. This one's definitely going to get a treatment on it as well. It's very uneven straight from the factory on this uh, CRKT Obake. All in all, it took me about an hour, maybe 15 minutes. But that being said, I was talking the whole time. I would have been much more efficient had I been doing this. But for a full-on reprofile job up to paper towel slicing sharp, I mean, that is pretty much effortless. Catching just a little bit there. I've got a little bit of a burr I need to strop out. But uh, I like that quite a bit. Let's go to the fancy camera. Now that we're in macro mode here, we can take a closer look at that edge there. It is so freaking even. I am very happy with that. I don't normally get an edge that looks that consistent when I'm freehanding. I'm definitely not an expert there. The other edge here is a little bit of a different story. You can see that the angle out back here is a little bit off. That scratch pattern, at least towards the spine of the blade, is still present. So it changed a little bit on me, but not that bad. The important thing is that I got sharpened out all the way towards the edge there. So it's not 100% pretty. It's not going to win any sharpening competitions. I don't even know if they do that, but uh, <laughs> very happy with the results. Do a little shine test here. But uh, you can see that reflects that edge pretty dang nicely. The text on there, pretty dang good results for a $60 bit of kit. Very good job, Worksharp. 
I am very happy with those results. So there we have it, the WorkSharp Precision Adjust Knife Sharpener. This is the very first time this knife has touched steel and you can see with all the camera work and everything, a little bit over an hour. Had I not been recording and dealing with cameras and swapping lenses and talking at the same time, I could have gotten the very same edge on this knife in about half an hour to 45 minutes, no problems whatsoever, even despite it being a pretty significant reprofiling job. To be completely honest, WorkSharp did send me the sharpener, but if I had to go out and buy this myself, I would do that without hesitation. Unfortunately, they're out of stock right now. But this has been an incredibly popular sharpener, and for very good reason, I think it is absolutely fantastic. It's very well thought out, it's very well made, and best of all, it's a very reasonable price, especially if you're just getting into the whole EDC game, or you want to start sharpening your own knives. I think it is a fantastic system. I'm going to be putting this thing through its paces on a couple of different types of knives. On this VG10, though, it performed very admirably. I'd be interested to see how it works over some pretty hard tool steels but I really, really enjoy these diamond plates. I think it's fantastic. And I am very excited to see where WorkSharp keeps taking this system in the future. After one sharpening though, you can see this is definitely gonna need a little bit of scrub down before my next uh, session, but very happy. I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna go lay down and take a nap because damn COVID's got me tired. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to WorkSharp, you guys are awesome. This sharpener is awesome. Stay tuned for the full review. If you want to see more gear reviews and some tutorials on how to strop your knife, check the description down below for links there. Thank you so much for watching. I think I already said that. I'm going to shut up now. See you guys in the next video. And as always, stay safe out there.